What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a sower and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat? Or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? Welcome back to Crit and Crit, I'm Sit. I'm Axion, and that dude just exploded. Yep. And, uh, yeah, we are continuing our discussion of uh, the Metamorphosis and our playthrough of Hollow Knight. Um, our topic today, you can probably guess from my um, a little bit too on the nose use of uh, Langston Hughes' Harlem, is deferred dreams, as we know Gregor has from his from basically the first time we see him. So, um, actually, what does it mean to defer a dream? Well, defer means to put off or delay. So, presumably, deferring a dream would be to have a goal in mind, but for some reason, usually, at least in my experience, tied to uh, financial or personal health, etc. reasons, having to put that goal off for a certain amount of time because to pursue it at this time would be, for one reason or another, unfeasible. Yeah, basically, the longer you are delayed from being able to work toward or even attempt to work toward your ambitions, your dreams, your desires, what does it do to you? And the poem um, likes to go into detail, well, not really a lot of detail, but give you ideas for what it can do to a person. Drying up like a raisin in the sun, just shriveling away and wasting away. Festering like a sower and then run could just be like lashing out at people and making things unpleasant for them. Uh, stinking like rotten meat could just be being like generally bitter and sad to be around, maybe not lashing out so much, but they're just kind of, you avoid them. Crusting and sugaring over, you could get more defensive and you get a harder shell around yourself. Like, you're still trying, but it's it's more bittersweet these days. Sagging like a heavy load probably sounds the most evocative to me. It's like, it just it weighs you down to know all of these things could have been yours and you'll never get them because you keep trying and it keeps getting put off and you keep getting told no. And the last one doesn't explode. In Gregor's case, I would say it does not. Gregor, I would say, is sagging like a heavy load. He yeah. keeps saying he's going to. He keeps saying, one day, one day I will be able to quit this job. I hate it here. I hate this job. I hate my boss. He hates me. He treats me like crap. I have the worst assignment. It's entirely because of my father's business debts. and He won't work to help me pay them off. But... Gregor never actually points that out. He takes it all onto himself, and I don't know if that's just because Gregor is a self-sacrificing type, or if because his father has convinced him that it's the only way. It could be column A, column B. But Gregor, the only we, the thing is, we only know that Gregor's dream is to quit his job. We don't know what Gregor actually wants for himself other than to help his family, since, you know, he's only working there long enough to pay off his family's debts, which keeps getting, you know, ne next year, next year, five years. In five years, I will be able to do this and to pay for his sister to go to music school. So, yeah. We don't really get to see the progression of time in terms of how this affects Gregor overall. Like, maybe he started off a lot more idealistic. By the time we get to him, he's very much just resigned to things. We basically only see the after effects, more or less. Ow, what yep. hit me? I don't know, maybe a dream deferred turns you into a cockroach. But, yeah. So, we don't know how Gregor started out with this. We just know that he's... By the time this starts, he has been so beaten down by life and this job he hates and the fact that he's stuck there for another year, two, three, four, okay, five years. Five or six years and I'll be able to walk away. That he's just so resigned to everything. He just accepts that he's the only one who's ever going to work in his family. He just accepts that this is his lot in life to clean up their messes, to never have any ambition for himself, 
beyond maybe one day I can afford to quit, to just kind of be ping-ponged along through life without having any agency of his own, and he's so tired and beaten down that he wakes up in an entirely new body, and his thought thought is only, well, now I'm gonna get fired. So... I mean... Yeah. As we've said before, this is not that abnormal for a lot of people. I've definitely had my share of days where I woke up feeling absolutely wretched, or I slept horribly, or I... Uh, am sore or whatever. Long list of possible uh, symptoms. And my reaction was I can't deal with this. I have to go to work. I can't afford to take the time to give this the rest and care it would need to fully recover. Or uh, even worse, I can't afford to treat this because I can't afford the medical costs. And yep. I know I am far from alone in this. Yep. And in Gregor's case, though, it's kind of just, well, what happens to Drain Deferreds and other people's situations as well. Like, we don't really get to see explicitly what everyone's dreams were. Like, we never get to hear about his mom's. We know his sister wanted to go to music school, and uh, Gregor was going to pay for it, but he turned into a bug before he got the chance. So it's unlikely that she's going to get to, because where would the money come from? The bank account they can't access? Um, we know what happened with his father. He lost his business dreams, ended up in debt, and kind of just shriveled up into, a, into nothingness and is lashing out at his son for you not, you know, not doing it fast enough. So, uh, yeah, losing your chance at making something of yourself, of doing what you've always wanted to, hurts a lot. Accepting that maybe it's not just not today, it's not ever in some cases hurts because you put so much of yourself into your dreams. This is what I want. This is what I need. No. Yep. And to use myself as an example again, I, I'm i not trying to be egotistical. It's just that this is what I... The examples I know. Uh, I lived for several years with my family because, well, typical millennial, I... In college, I was in college debt, had a fairly poor paying job, and all that fun stuff that everybody has probably experienced, uh, who's probably in the age range for watching this. And, uh, oh. Got, Flytrap got me that time. But yeah, um,. I lived with my family for several years, and Sint and I were dating for most of that, but it was long-distance dating because we were several states apart. And the goal was always for me to eventually get up enough funds to be able to spare the expense for a cross-country journey. And that took several years before we managed to actually pull it off. And while we did manage it, uh, it was not without its stresses and troubles. And uh, some of that was definitely financial. And... There were a lot of things that basically got delayed or paused or abandoned so that we could focus on that more uh, that that more end goal and a lot of times that that had to get delayed in and of itself because 
well, no, we're not ready yet for one reason or another. We don't have the time or the money, so it's going to have to be a couple years more or whatever. And that's a very, very tame example. There are definitely people who are in much, much worse situations than I was with that regard, whose financial situations are much less tenable and have much bigger and more important issues uh, hanging in the balance uh, that they have to keep putting off. Wow, I am really taking the hits here. Uh, that they have to keep putting things off that are much more important than that. But it's, like I said, it's the example I have. Yeah, like, mostly when this comes up, it's usually in the sense of, like, an ambition or a new career or just, like, something you've always wanted to achieve rather than something you want to escape. But, yeah, we don't really get that from Gregor. Gregor is just, I hate my job, and my dearest wish is to never have to go into work again. Well, he gets it in the worst way possible. Yep, and... Uh, there's another story that immediately comes to mind in that Monkey's regard. Paw. Monkey's Paw. <laughs> yep. But, yeah, I think the point I really wanted to get to is here, in, t in here is just, like, Kafka doesn't really make it a focus of what happens to a person when they know that they're never going to be able to do the things they wanted, that they're going to have to settle for what they have, or in Gregor's case, have everything they ever had taken away from them by random chance. And it's just... It may, might be for the best, because the work is bleak enough without a, a, a fine psychological lens being put over each character and how this is mentally affecting them because we can already get quite a lot of bleakness out of how this is affecting each of them just from the sparse narration the description we have about that I did not want to fall there that's okay Gregor didn't want to be a cockroach but yeah I can't really think of anything else to add on this that kind of just uh, ended up kind of a bit of a ramble didn't it but it tends to be how literary analysis tends to go, at least at first. You start piecing ideas together and seeing how the themes resonate with you. And obviously you have found something in this bleak story about an uncaring world and how freak accidents can utterly derail not just your life, but your entire family's. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the point of literary analysis, is looking into why these stories resonate with people decades, centuries even, after their publication. Yeah, and... And in some cases, it's a bleaker picture than others. Yep. Thankfully, this... next time, we will be returning to something mildly happier. We'll start with a serial killer! And we will come back to Hollow Knight in the future with a different story. One that will be only slightly less depressing differently depressing. Let's just go with that. Yeah, that works. But it may be a while. Until then? Yeah. See you guys later. Have a good one. Hopefully better than Gregor Samsa. That's a low bar.